You know what I was sitting here thinking? Well, I actually had a conversation with my sister, like my biological sister last night. We were texting. Girl, we were tearing up Julia. <laughs> Messy. This is the thing. For me, Kanye West really is like, when it comes to fashion, I think Kanye is fly. I think that sometimes the things that he does, it goes over some of our heads, including mine. Um, but I think that I always come around and I'm like, oh my God, that's actually, girl, it's a look. Girl, Kanye West is fly to me. I think the way that he is styling Julia Fox, I think the outfits are fly. I do. The problem that I'm having with this whole Julia Fox, Kanye West thing is Kanye. I get that now you're on this whole, let me find a new muse, you know, let me find a new canvas. That girl is not that girl. And how I know she's not that girl, one, <laughs> I don't think she's that girl. Two, even the people that dislike him still say that that girl cannot be compared to Kimberly Kardashian. You struck gold. <laughs> as much as she, she dumb, right? Amber Rose, I remember when, <laughs> I remember when Kanye West was walking around town with his bald-headed heifer and I didn't know who that was. All I knew is that she was bad. Like, bad. <laughs> That's all I knew. Baby, who is this bald-headed walking around with Kanye? Whoa. Baby, she is bad. I think he's trying to recreate what he had with Amber Rose and what he had with Kim. You know, for me, I do think that Kanye did Kim had a name before Kanye, but she didn't have a name in fashion. Kanye opened up that door for Kim to the fashion world. That's low-key why he really mad. <laughs> One of the reasons. I just, I think that when I look at that girl, Julia Fox, she gives me white trash. She gives me white trash who finally took a shower. She's semi-cute at best. Nothing about her gives me you're going to make Kim Kardashian jealous. Girl, you would have did better by getting me by your side. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to tell you for real, for real, though. No, for real. You, If Kanye wanted to make Kim jealous, he should have went and got a black girl. A fly bad black girl, baby, it would have been over for Kim and them sisters. Baby, everybody head would have exploded from Kim on down. <laughs> you are the grandmama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this whole Julia Fox. I don't. And I really, again, think that he thinks that she's that girl and she's not that girl. Julia will never be that girl. There is not one person alive. I have not seen one comment online, whether it's the shade room, any blog that has hyped up Julia Fox. No one has looked at J Julia Fox as that girl. And Kanye, you keep parading her around like she's that girl. And she's not that girl. She's not. And she probably never will be. Not probably. She will never be. Like, you went literally from Kim Kardashian, who is a nice-looking woman. You know, I don't know how that but You know, I've never liked Kim. That was just too much butt for Kim. From the from face and forward, Kim is that girl. And when you start to look at her resume, and then you went and got Julia Fox, <laughs> who was just online the other day, 
hollering and screaming and crying. I ain't gonna say she was hollering and screaming and crying. But she was acting a fool because she didn't have a baby by a, 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 somebody made for the streets. So you don't want got you want you don't want to got somebody who can't pay their bills, who look like they just took a shower the other day, and you think that's gonna make Kim Kardashian jealous. What I really want to know is where that baby at. Julia, where is that baby at? That's what we want to know. Where that baby at, Julia? Because that baby only five months old. So I'm trying to figure out how you all up in Paris with a newborn like that. Where is that baby? Where is that baby? Because we know he ain't with the daddy. And if that baby is with the daddy, that just goes to just goes to prove that you trifling. Because you just told us how trifling the daddy was. So if you left that baby with that trifling man, you're you're really trifling. And if you can't even sit down and be still, and you got your baby <laughs> prancing around with you and Kanye West, and this circus that y'all got going on, you're still trifling. I get Julia from what they say. Julia, Julia trying to get these bills paid. So I'm not mad at nobody for trying to get their bills paid, honey. Work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. You would have did better not letting us know about that man who you laid down and had a baby with after you done sit here and told us, girl, that you, girl, that you, that you dated plenty of billionaires. Well, girl, you done poked a hole, girl, and that's the one. Girl, let me make sure I got this right. You say you done dated plenty of billionaires, mama, and the one that you decided to have a baby with was a crackhead. Was a crackhead. <laughs> Girl, I'm sorry. That sounded insensitive. Not to sound insensitive to people who struggle with drug addiction. But girl, that's the one who you decided to have a baby with. You didn't want to have a baby with one of the billionaires. You had a baby with the one who, girl, you have to you, you got you don't have to get online and let the world know you can't pay your bills. I don't know why that just bothered me today. Because I really haven't been keeping up with Julia Fox and Kanye like that, like that. But then I read the article today on page six, and I think that's what, what kind of got me bothered. Like, girl, he really prancing this girl around like she's that girl. And she's really not that girl. Anyway, Shaw. <laughs> yeah, she's giving me poor, she's giving me poor white trailer trash, girl, who waiting for them stamps to hit, girl. Ain't washed her ass in about, girl, seven days. And smell like the outside. I don't care how I don't know I don't care how expensive those clothes are that you put on Miss Julia, girl. She does not wear them. They're wearing her. I I want to know how it feels. Like I even with Kim and Amber, it wouldn't drive you crazy to just kind of be someone's. I mean, I guess it's one thing if you're getting paid to do it, like a supermodel, how they're kind of like, you know, this is my canvas and I want to, you know, whatever. But girl, I feel like Kanye would get on my nerve. Like, you probably don't have a say in anything that you wear. And the thing about clothes for me is you can have the flyest outfit on. But if you can't sell it, it don't matter. You can have the ugliest outfit on. And this mama walk through feel like she that girl and she becomes that girl just because of her attitude. <laughs> anyway, child. Listen to this. Listen to this mess right here. Pastor 55 and his wife 56 are arrested after eight disabled people are found imprisoned in their basement, in the basement of their Georgia home. Curtis Keith Bankson 55 and his wife Sophia uh, and his wife, Sophia Sim Banks, in 56, were arrested for false imprisonment after eight residents were found in the, in the basement. EMS arrived um, at their home in Griffin, Georgia, to assist a patient who had suffered a seizure at their unlicensed group home. Authorities had to enter the basement uh, through a window after finding the basement door to be dead bolted shut. EMS 
and the fire department notified the police that the couple were imprisoning people inside of their home and controlling their finances. The pastor has since denied the claims and said the residents could come and go as they please. Curtis has disputed the claims that One Step of Faith Second Chance, their unlicensed group home, was holding people against their wills and they were free to come and go as they please. Authorities said the caretakers have been leasing this property for approximately 14 months using the basement as a personal care home for individuals, which essentially imprisoned them against their will. Police in Griffin located about 40 miles um, south of Atlanta reported that they found a dead bolt on the basement door that was used to lock the patients in during certain parts of the day. Authorities said the caretakers have been leasing the property for approximately 14 months. We already talked about, oh, I just read that part, sorry. Um, authorities found the door dead bolted after arriving at the Valley Road residence to assist a patient who had suffered a seizure. Girl, same thing I just read, girl. Listen, you know, one thing I think is so disgusting, it's a lot of things I think that are disgusting, but one of the things that I think that is so disgusting in this situation is you have someone and you already know how people get when it comes to their faith, their religion, whatever, right? You know how people can get and you know, and I don't mean that like in a, in a bad way, but you, when people believe in what they believe in, they hold it dear to their heart. And so when you have this person who is a pastor and he knows the power that he probably holds, right? And then he uses that to take advantage of disabled folk. It's just disgusting. And y'all wonder why anytime I see a story about John Gray or Jamal Brown or this pastor, I have my foot planted on their necks, <laughs> Okay. You know, it's one thing for you just to be a trifling, philandering man who can't keep his penis in his pants, Jamal Bryant, right? It's one thing for you to figure, you know, John Gray said allegedly he had emotional affairs with these women, right? It's a whole nother layer when you're taking advantage of disabled folk. And then you're keeping them against their will in your basement. And, and the, the sad thing about it is that some of these people probably came to you for help. And you took advantage of the situation. These be y'all pastors, baby. These be y'all pastors, the ones y'all run to. Not to say, not to put blame on the victims. But y'all wonder why, why y'all wonder why, why, why. Plus, of course, personal reasons too. I have to, I will have to admit that because of personal reasons too. Things that I've been uh, through before with, you know, uh, we're not going to talk about that today, but things I've been through before, I have to say, I probably, that's part of the problem too. This is a mess. I hope they go to jail. For real, for real. I hate it. Oh, it's disgusting. Who else? This is what I wanted to talk about. And it was so crazy. I was on somebody's page the other day and they took a poll. I don't know who page it was. It was somebody's YouTube page, of course. Who was it? Was it Scotty? I don't know. If, I don't think it was that. I think it was Jessica Kahinor. Was it Jessica Kahinor? I can't remember who it was. Some it was somebody. It was some YouTuber who took a poll and who asked a question. Had did, did a poll and I answered the question. So basically, the question was: Do you think that like the like the um, prosecutors should be able to use rappers' lyrics in a case? And I put yes, girl. Like eighty percent of people said no, and then it was me and a couple other people who said yes. And I forgot about the story. And then I was watching Erica De Niro's TV, um, what is it called? Channel Today. And she was talking about it, and, I, and that's how I, re I remembered. 
So, for those who don't know, this is according to the Jasmine brand. Jay-Z, Meek Mill, Fat Joe, Kelly Rowland, and Robin Thicke push for a law that would prohibit New York prosecutors from using rap lyrics as evidence. Many famed music, 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 musical artists are teaming up to make sure that rappers' lyrics can't be used against them in a court of law. According to reports, Jay-Z 52 and Meek Mill 34 are putting their support behind a proposed New York state law that could block lyrics from being used during trials. The bill entitled Rap Music on Trial aims to limit the use, uh, use of an artist's creative expression as evidence and will, cry, will require prosecutors to prove with clear and convincing proof that any lyrics in question are fictional, art and fictional. According to reports, the, legisl the, legisl the, legisl the legislation passed through the New York Senate Codes Committee yesterday and was first proposed in New York uh, 2021 by Senator Brad Holman, uh, Senator Jamal Bailey, and Assemblymember Catalina Cruz. In addition to Jay-Z and Meek Mill, multiple celebrities have also backed the bill, including Fat Joe 51, Big Sean 33, Yo Gotti 40, Kelly Rowland 40. Kelly, I'm so disappointed in you. Kelly, uh, Killer Mike, 46, and Robin Thick, 44. A letter that was reportedly sent to state law, uh, lawmakers from Jay-Z's attorney, Alex Spiro, and University of Richmond's professor, Eric Nilsson, which is signed by the musicians who backed the bill, explains the importance of the legislation. The letter states, rather than, rather than acknowledge rap music as a form of artistic expression, police and prosecutors argue that the lyrics would be interpreted interpreted literally. And the well, I thought y'all said y'all rap. Girl, y'all already know what the story's about. This is what I have to say. If y'all, either it's one of the two things. Either it's one of the two things. Either y'all are lying about the things that y'all have went through in life, okay? Or either you're telling the truth. And the number one question is, why are you in court anyways? If you end up in court, for whatever reason, and if you have said something in one of your songs that can help prove a case against you, I think that you should be able to use it. And I'm, and I'm no different with Bill Cosby. The jokes he made on stage was imitating real life. I remember it's a song with Rick Ross. And he was basically, I forgot the, I forgot the lyrics to the song. But this is, I know, I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's a song with Rick Ross. And he basically talked about kind of like slipping something in somebody's drink and taking them home. Girl, what? So if Rick Ross was to go to uh trial for whatever type of case, I think they should be able to use that. You was already talking about slipping pills in the girls' drinks. I don't understand why they talking about this can't be used. Yes, it should be. Yes. It should be. Again, y'all supposed to be rappers rapping about your real life. Now, all of a sudden, you shouldn't be able to use that against me in court. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And yes, they should. Stop rapping about it. Hello? <laughs> that got me so worked up when I saw that. Because I was, when I saw the amount of people that were like, no, they shouldn't be able to, the basic agreeing with them, I was like, oh, you know, I mean, sometimes I be on the wrong side of stuff. But a lot of times I be on the right side of stuff. Y'all just don't be, <laughs> y'all got to catch up with me. Anyways, child, I'll talk to y'all later. I think that they should be able to use whatever these rappers say in their songs. Again, the first question is, why your ass in court in the first place? Okay? That's the first question. And if you are in court for a reason, 
for whatever reason, and you out here rapping about it in your songs, baby, we're gonna be we gonna be speaker. <laughs> and this song titled So and So released on this album, it was track number four. This is what he said. And this is what they say he did in real life. So yes. I'll talk to y'all girls later. Bye.